We are expecting Antonella, who is a co-founder of the organization called Women's Brain Project. This organization is trying to solve the difference between sex and gender in mental diseases. And she will be telling us more about the organization, the way how they work, and also how they are trying to find a solution to solve this issue and the research they have done so far. Could you please briefly introduce yourself to us? My name is Antonella Santucciona-Ciada. I am a medical doctor and a neuroscientist. I work as a lead, global lead, for Alzheimer's Disease and Partnership at Roche, but I am also the co-founder and the CEO of the Women Brain Project. What is the idea behind the Women's Brain Project or the goal of this organization? The Women's Brain Project, it is an organization which is mainly consisting of scientists, and uh, patients. Together we are trying to understand the impact that sex and gender differences might have on brain and mental diseases but also on the way we do develop novel technologies and artificial intelligence. We produce science and uh, we also educate around our outcomes and results. Why are women generally more affected with brain diseases such as Alzheimer's than men? Well, this is not yet very well understood. <clears throat> it is not yet clear if it is because of uh, biological reasons or social reasons. And highly likely it is a combination of both. This is especially true for the Alzheimer's disease. Can you maybe explain a bit more about it or the research you have been doing so far? Yes, uh, basically what we did was to uh, revise the data available in the published scientific literature. And uh, what we have observed is that uh, it became obvious that women were not only confronted with Alzheimer's disease uh, more than men in terms of numbers, being more women affected than men, but it also became uh, mm, clear that uh, women will have progressed faster with the disease, which means uh, women will have uh, had a faster decline as compared to men. And very often the symptomatic of a woman might differ than the one of a man. If we look for instance at Alzheimer's disease, it's about usually women be being more depressed and um, having more uh, delusional thoughts, while men might display more of an aggressive symptomatic. And of course this reflects also then in the therapy that you have to tailor for these specific symptoms. We know that today we can, by changing our lifestyle, modify or reduce the risk for developing dementia later on in life. One other factor that it is well known that might mm, help us in uh, pre preventing dementia uh, when we are older, it is education. And this is a topic which is uh, a very dear one to me, because uh, if we look at, on a global scale at the education level of women, we might say, or we have to admit, that women uh, are less educated than men. Uh, very often the way that a woman can access education pathways uh, it is not as the same as for men. And uh, this could be one of the reasons why eventually uh, women are more prone to develop um, Alzheimer's disease. So as human beings we also have a social life. And my question would be if you think that the social system or like the, the social structure we live in has also an impact on the mental diseases and if yes what needs to change in order to to help to solve this problem well i am pretty sure that what you're mentioning it is uh, right because we know that uh, the social influence on the role that a woman and a man are having within the society plays a major role also in our mental um, health well-being uh, and uh, yes, I agree that uh, the concept of one size fit all has to change because uh, we cannot imagine a society where a solution can be applied to each individual. I think that each of us has the right to have a tailored solution. We need a society which is also then going towards those precise offering to the citizen. I have to go away from this 
large view like everybody is the same and to exactly. start to focus on each person yes and or at least starting for from subgroups and then maybe in the future we will really achieve this uh, tailored one person solution data sets usually are referring to uh, European uh, wide male population and this is a problem that the scientific community is now more and more aware of so by taking this into account I think that we can only improve the way we do develop this type of solutions for the interest of the whole um, world because diversity it's not only about sex and gender but it's also about uh, ethnicity it's about geography it is about wealth it is about the way we differ in our uh, capacity of metabolizing drugs based on our genetics like you know a European will have a different type of genetics as a Japanese yeah. and uh, this has to be carefully considered and the same is true for uh, the Indian population or the African population so w we believe that uh, sex and gender it is the starting point but then any other type of diversity has to be considered not only the medicine and the drug industry needs to get more personal it's also about the communication, how absolutely. you communicate the, the absolutely, issue. Absolutely, absolutely. You are a founder of the Women's Brain Project. And a bit more personal question, what is the achievement you are the most proud of? The achievement which made me, and which makes me very proud, it is uh, the work that is done by the team of uh, scientists at uh, the Women Brain Project. The work we do, I find that it's extraordinary, provided the fact that we do it pro bono and that uh, we started just three years ago and we have, I think, now a global reputation for outstanding type of science contribution to improving the learning on sex and gender factors influencing brain and mental diseases, but also beyond basically how this difference might impact the whole medical field and uh, health outcomes.